Hey there, everybody. Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness, leading the movement for movement. And thank you again for jumping in on or stumbling upon or having your algorithm send you to the Autism Fitness and the Tuesday training. So in this edition of Tuesday Training, and before I get into that, I should mention that if you are ready to become an Autism Fitness Certified Pro and bring the best, most meaningful, most effective, and we're going to be talking about that today, fitness and adapted PE programming to the autism and neurodiverse athletes that you serve, then it is a point of reference and high on the list to head on over to the autism fitness to autismfitness.com. The link is in the description of this video below. So speaking of effective, I wanted to talk about the most important or one of the most important aspects of physical development and progression and actually making exercises functional and effective for not only our athletes, but any athletes when we're talking about training and movement and what actually makes something do the thing that it's supposed to do. In this case, we're talking about an exercise, whether it's strength or power or mobility, what is the effect that it's going to have? Because an exercise is a tool, right? It is something that we can implement. However, if we are not implementing it safely, uh, effectively, and at the current ability level of that particular athlete, then it is not going to have um, the training effect that we want it to have. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to provide that exercise or coach that exercise at the appropriate level of modification or in the case that the athlete is advancing of, of progression. And the key indicator for this is motor control. Does the athlete have control over that particular movement? And the way to tell is, is there a steady, we call the concentric, so the pressing or the pushing away from the body, the concentric motion, and then of course the eccentric motion. Do they have control over the lowering? So the first video that I want to show here, one of our athletes squatting, and you can see he's advancing here he's squatting to a low box so he's breaking parallel and coming back up so we get a little forward hinge there as well that rep looked really good you see the things that we're looking for here we're looking for rooting of the feet we're looking for those knees turning out just a little bit it's going to vary with everybody but we don't want the knees turning in we don't want that knee valgus or that hip internal rotation really really important and this is going to be a difference maker between this particular exercise the the box squat being effective or just continually exacerbating a a, a deficit or a uh, or an issue with strength and stability right so he comes up and you see here he has control so you can count one two maybe even two and a half as he's squatting down one two he has control over this move, movement, which is a big deal. A lot of the athletes that you or I might work with will bounce or they'll go really quickly through a movement pattern. And that's the difference. That is a difference maker between the exercise being effective and less so. Because if we don't create an environment and a situation in which those muscles are contracting and stabilizing, then the exercise is not going to have the same effect. It's going to have a very limited effect because the athlete is not actually using the muscle to its fullest availability. Now, of course, with the autism and neuroadaptive population, this process takes time, which is all the more reason to not use a great amount of variety in your programming. Occasionally, I'm asked, what about more exercises and what other exercises can we do? Don't. We need the same exercises over and over and over to create a training effect. Variety is often the enemy of progress here, even if it seems like, oh, let's do a lot of different things. Great. Now show me the actual physical development here. Oops, it's missing because we didn't set the foundation for that athlete first. So the second video that I'm going to show you over here is another athlete and we're going to show this with his overhead press and then a squat as well 
So we got Jay here. We're setting him up for this press. Now he's progressed to the eight pound sandbells here. And you see those first couple repetitions are a little bit shaky. So we're gonna reset him. Now we're getting more control. So you see there's a difference and it might be a half a second or a one second difference. And now he's getting a little bit more range of motion in those presses as well. But that's going to be a big difference in the effect of the exercise, going slow and controlled, not talking about like 20 seconds, but talking about two or three versus just pumping it, uh, pumping the weight up and down repeatedly and getting at, at getting out of it. Now, oftentimes with the, the ASD and the neuroadaptive population, this is a distinction that needs to be taught. The athlete is not necessarily recognizing the difference, between going really fast and then slow and controlled. So that's something that we need to coach and something that we cover extensively in the level one certification. So here you see, this is the bounce. So here is the squat bounce, clearly less effective at this point. So we're teaching, this is a starting point. So this is our athlete's baseline. And now after a couple of repetitions, we see him slow down a little bit, right? And see here, this is, eventually we want the athlete to be able to stand up not using his back here. So this is really important. This is why understanding the purpose and the performance of an, of an exercise is so crucial. It's not just about saying, oh, squats are good, let's use squats. Understanding where the athlete is with respect to their ability to perform that squat, providing it at a modified level to where the movement pattern looks good and they have enough strength and stability. And that could be reducing the range of motion. You saw the first athlete is able to able to squat much lower, break parallel with his hips and come back up control. Second athlete is working on that. Same exercise, different levels of ability right now. It doesn't mean that we need a completely different set of exercises for the second athlete. It means that we need a modified variation of the squat for that athlete. Simple. Not easy, but simple. So motor control is something that is inherent to the successful completion and performance of an exercise, particularly the strength exercises when we're talking about squats and presses and pulls. And it's also going to be the difference maker in an exercise effectiveness uh, as well. And that is on us as coaches to provide in, in an effective way for, for our athletes. So that's a little bit about motor control. It's something we spend a lot of time discussing, discovering, and practicing in the Autism Fitness Level 1 certification. Dates for the 2023 Level 1 certification live practicals are going to be up very soon. So if this is your year to get certified, it is time. I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness. Thank you for watching this edition of Tuesday Training. Please like and subscribe if you find this content worthwhile and helpful for you and your athletes. And I'll be coming to you again next week.